Hi everyone, my name's Scott. Welcome to Planes, Trains, Everything and welcome to Sofia in Bulgaria. I'm here for two nights and I'm going to be exploring the sights of the city and also trying some Bulgarian food, which I've heard is pretty good. One slight problem, I've just come off the coach from London. London to Sofia by coach, 50 hours and I haven't slept a wink, so you can imagine I'm a little bit tired. So I'm going to check in at the Best Western Terminus Hotel and I'll see you when we're there. Well, this is a nice enough reception area. I like the, uh, the TV up there with all the flight departures. Just one thing missing, however, staff. I've been here for about five minutes, not a peep. This is a comfort king and I picked the best Western Terminus because it is literally two minutes from the station, three minutes from the bus station. I knew I wouldn't have much energy when I got here. Okay, let's go for a quick, quick guided tour. One huge king size bed, which will be used very shortly, I can assure you. PowerPoint, but no USB. Phone there. A desk, chair, aha, kettle. Now we're talking complimentary water, one television, full-size mirror, which a lot of rooms don't have, storage area, safe, a fridge, and a quick look at the uh, bathroom. Very nice, pure herbs, okay. And one very large, very large shower room. Bit of mildew in the corner there, but otherwise, this will do the job. So the plan of action is to have a shower. I haven't had a shower for over two days, so uh, hey, I don't care if I offend other people, I just don't want to offend myself. I'm then gonna go for a sleep in this bed here uh, knowing the way I sleep, I will sleep for about four hours and then wake up. That'll be around about 10 p.m. Do I go out and get something to eat or do I just roll over and go back to sleep? Who knows? In the meantime though, I'm going to show you the view. That's not a bad view. I'm not even sure if the, uh, the windows are soundproofed or not because there wasn't much noise coming from there, those buses and the, the trams passing. That's one of the main roads into the city centre of um, Sofia. Anyway, I'm going to have uh, a shower, I'm going to have a sleep, I'm going to charge my batteries, I'm going to recharge the GoPro's batteries, and I'll see you in approximately four hours, I reckon. Just one little update. I found a couple of USBs here. Fantastic. Yeah, it's just gone 10 o'clock, so that's about four hours, but I'm going to roll back, go back to sleep. I'll see you in the morning. I've got absolutely no desire to go out looking for food at this time, so I'll see you in the morning. The good thing about breakfast is, because it is in a foreign hotel, very often they have foreign breakfasts as well to keep the locals happy. So hopefully there'll be something Bulgarian tomorrow. See you in the morning. Good morning everybody. That bed there is actually quite comfortable, but then I could have slept on any bed last night because of the sleep deprivation. I slept for about 13 hours, which is almost a personal best for me. As a result, I'm running a little bit late. It's about 20 minutes to 11. Haven't had any breakfast because breakfast finishes at 10. Uh, there is a, a kettle there, so I'm gonna get some coffee, then I'm gonna hit the road.
Да. Not the greatest. 30 seconds before I was due to leave my hotel room, there was a knock on the door. It was one of the cleaners. I think she was probably checking to make sure I was still alive. It is quarter past 11 after all, but I'm still tired. I was kind of floating around that room not knowing what I was doing. But anyway, we've got fresh air. We've got some disgustingly tasting caffeine in my bloodstream. Let's go exploring. It's not going to be a busy manic day today. I've got 11 attractions to see based on TripAdvisor and they're all kind of about a mile or two in that direction. They're all kind of clustered together so it's going to be a nice easy day. What have I learned about Bulgaria already? Well having just driven from the Serbian border yesterday and spent next to no time here in the city I can tell you that I was caught off guard by the Cyrillic alphabet. Now I can read a little bit of Russian just enough to see me through but if you can't read Russian, you could find yourself in challenging positions. Um, there are some multilingual signs, but a lot of it is still in Cyrillic alphabet, so be prepared. Um, I only learned how to read Russian because I was doing my end-to-end -end journey and I was spending about a week in Russia itself. And I do know that Bulgarian is a different language from Russian, but on the bus, because it was um, a crew of Bulgarian drivers and the passengers were mainly Bulgarian, I could pick up occasionally words like Dobre, which is good, and Da for yes, and numbers as well. So either there are similarities between Bulgarian and Russian, or they choose to speak Russian on that bus. Anyway, enough of the chit chat, let's find some attractions. <laughs> Right, I've just stumbled across a market, which is a good thing, or a bad thing, depending on how you look at it. I don't have any Bulgarian currency on me, so I'm hoping that people accept credit card. Otherwise, I'm going to have to find an ATM, because I'm starving. I haven't had anything to eat. Well, a proper meal for two days. Just snacks and stuff. Right. It's kind of weird having been in that bus for two days from London, and then in that hotel room. Uh, for the last two to three days, I've been in air-conditioned environments. I know in the fresh air it smells so good, but my sense of smell is just ping at the moment. I've smelled something being cooked over there. I smell what smelled like pastries being uh, cooked. Uh, I can smell the vegetables from over there. This smells great. I just need to find an ATM to get some uh, moolar. That was such a cool market, strictly fruit and vegetables. And most of the, uh, the produce I can understand or recognize, but there's a couple of things that look kind of strange to me. And of course, I might be able to read a little bit of Russian, but a handwritten script, oh no, oh, I couldn't work out what these things were. Good fun. Right, down here, uh, I do have to do a right turn and we are almost in the city center. Okay, two lots of good news. Good news number one, found some cash. It's 20 lev, which is around about eight pounds 50 or thereabouts. That's enough for a cup of coffee and a sticky bun. That's fine. And secondly, I found number one and number two landmarks I've been looking for. One's the Banja Basi Mosque, and the other one is the Sofia Central Baths. Built in 1576. 
What a beautiful looking building. As far as I can recall, uh, mosques are a little bit reluctant when it comes to tourism, especially when it comes to uh, photography, so I'm not even going to try. It looks like a magnificent building. I've been to the Central Mosque in Glasgow, and you're allowed to go in there once a year. It's in September, I think, and it's a doors open day, and you can have a good look around and you get a tour. But uh, overall, I think they're fairly restrictive when it comes to photography. And here we have Sophia Central Baths. I've already had a shower today, so I will not be taking advantage of this place. But let's have a closer look. Okay, I'm feeling brave now. Look. <laughs> oh. oh, that was very sulfurous. <laughs> It's a pretty impressive building, opened in 1908 and it uses mineral springs which I've just tasted and I've still got the taste in my mouth. People were laughing at me when I screwed my face up but it was pretty... <laughs> right, the next attraction according to TripAdvisor. Having not had any breakfast and it is just gone midday, that's because I slept in, um, there's a supermarket here and they appear to have a little cafe as well, so guess where I'm heading? Oofed. That latte ticked a few boxes. It wasn't just a case of getting up to cruising altitude. I needed to get the engines running to begin with. Yeah, that ticked a few boxes, definitely. Um, I have been to Bulgaria before, but not actually been to Bulgaria. And I'm enjoying it so far. Originally it was um, February 1991 and I had a transit visa to get from Istanbul to Belgrade and I was on the train, never set foot in the country. So I'm enjoying this. Look at this, this is a, a Roman ruin right in the centre of Sofia. And it's totally open to the public, this is brilliant. The next attraction is actually just at the very end there. And what I'm discovering is, once you get into the city centre, everything is so close to one another. I mean look at that, there's the mosque again. This actually isn't one of my 11 attractions. I just kind of stumbled across this. Although you don't just stumble across something like this. Now what I wanted to see now is the Church of St. Petka of the Saddlers. That's what it's called in English. I'm not going to try and pronounce it in Bulgarian. And it's just up here. And that's it right there. It says here it was built uh, under Ottoman occupation in the 15th century. This here just tells you how much history there is underneath your feet. This wasn't dug up until, according to this board here, 2010 and 2012 when they were building a metro. Yeah, it's definitely colder, windier and wetter here in Sofia than I expected, but hey, I'm having a good time. It's a lovely city. I actually found myself spending way too much time in that supermarket. So many nice things to look at and I thought, no, 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 no. This is mainly to do with the sights. With a little bit of food at the end, there is a supermarket close to the hotel. That's the plan of action at the very end of the video. Go in there and have a look at uh, the foods. Right, next attraction. This is actually quite impressive. Next attraction is over in that direction. This is a government building. Well, it's surrounded by a government building. And there's some stern looking uh, police officers or security guards outside 
and I thought either I'm going to be allowed in or I'm going to get arrested. Fortunately it was the first. St George's Rotunda. As soon as someone spots you with a GoPro, oh you know cameras, can you take a, a photo of us? Yeah why not, it's easier than giving directions that's for sure. How cool is this? Let's go inside. Sadly, I didn't get into St George's Rotunda because A, there was a service on and B, they don't like photography anyway. I noticed this in Russia with the uh, Orthodox churches. They say no photography, but they're a little bit uh, laid back. But here, they make it perfectly clear. No photo, no photo. Right, archaeological museum right over there. I usually leave museums for cold wet days and today is a cold wet day but that museum is definitely worth going into anyway. The number of artifacts, gold artifacts, in fact I noticed that probably they have more guards in there than guests which makes sense really. In fact I can't think of a worse job than being a security guard in a museum. Well actually there are worse jobs but you know what I mean. Sitting around all day, eight hours a day, looking at your mobile phone or sleeping as one guy was doing. Next on the agenda is the Ethnographic Museum, but I think I'll give that a miss because firstly, it's not raining, it's warmed up a little bit, and my interest in traditional regional costumes, jewelry, woolen fabrics, and embroidery is kind of limited. So we'll leave this in case it actually starts pouring down with rain, but this is another one ticked off the list. Sorry about the wind, it's really quite blowy here in the center of Sofia. The one I've been looking forward to, the attraction is, the Russian Church of St. Nicholas, and it's just up here. If it's as good as some of the churches I saw in Russia, I'm gonna be a happy man. I fell in love with the Russian churches when I was doing my end-to-end -end journey from Portugal to Vietnam, and I spent the best part of a week in Russia, and some of the churches there are absolutely magnificent. I just hope I can get in, and I just hope I can use a camera. I'd better watch what I'm doing. The police have been tipped off that I'm here. I hope I can get inside. There could be something going on. <laughs> Apart from that police car, there's also a couple of very butch looking black SUVs. I wonder what's going on. I managed to get into the crypt, very small, very crowded, there's a big shop that takes up about a quarter of the space down there. Um, there is a small prayer area, I couldn't film it because it make it very very clear, no photography, no videos, no nothing. And also there was someone there praying so I thought, okay, doesn't happen. But I'm now going to try and get into the church itself, wish me luck. Sorry but no sneaky shots from inside the church. Uh, there was one security guard there and he was being very, very proactive. One other visitor was using his Google Translate on his phone. 
and the guy nearly had a heart attack and he says no photo no photo so he had to explain he was doing a, a google translate and he stood and watched him while he translated it and then put his phone away so they weren't taking any prisoners in there This is Tsar Liberator Street. This is the posh part of town. We've got the Austrian embassy there. There's a couple of other embassies around here. Hey, there's an intercontinental there. I'll just stay at the Best Western, thanks very much. And follow the yellow brick road. Very, very posh around here. Nearly got run over by a Maserati. If I'm gonna get run over, it has to be a classy car. Wow, what is that? Wow. Let's see Alexander Nevsky Cathedral. Pretty impressive. That is actually on my list of things to see, but I've sort of gone off on a tangent. Boy, it's starting to get windy and cold again. Do you reckon we should try and get inside? Yeah, let's do this. They have no problem with photography in there. The problem, however, is this just so much to photograph. There is actually a fee you're supposed to be paying, but no one was collecting it, so hey. Right. I've misplaced myself, but when you've got a landmark like that, you're not lost for long. So I was trying to get my bearings, and next on the TripAdvisor list is the Gallery of Ancient Bulgarian Art. And I thought, it's around here somewhere. No, it's right behind me. Uh, to be honest, ancient Bulgarian art isn't my bag, baby, but if it starts to rain, I might actually go in and have a look. But at least that's what the front door looks like. It looks as if quite a few people have been sitting on that line for a photograph. Do you reckon I should do it? Nah, maybe not. I don't know if it would actually be covered by my travel insurance. Reason for broken back. Fell off lion. Nah, doesn't work. Got a war memorial down here. Let's have a little respectful look at it. This is the Temple of St. Sophia. To be honest with you, when I was coming in from the Serbian border yesterday, entering Sophia, it, the city looked a bit grim, a bit grey, a bit wet. It looked not very inviting. But once you get into the city centre, it's absolutely beautiful. This has been a major surprise to me. I was just thinking, Sophia is a beautiful city, and it's a bleak kind of an early March spring day. Imagine what it would be like in the middle of summer. Hmm, I wonder. I might have to come back. I was going to go in there, but it looks as if there could be possibly a funeral going on or something? I better not. Okay, ignore that. It's not a funeral. There's some sort of press conference going on. As if I can't tell the difference. Loads of cameras and stuff. Hmm.
всеобщо смирение и прекалено проблемно търпане, политическата страст са на место. И за това. My stomach has just reminded me that it's 20 to 3. I haven't really eaten much today and I am starving. So let's find some food. Let me explain. <clears throat> Two nights on that bus, I didn't eat proper meals. And here I'm in the posh part of town and the only restaurant I found was underneath the Intercontinental and I thought, no. So McDonald's came to the rescue. It'll do the, it'll do the job. It is three o'clock in the afternoon. So if I have a huge meal, I'm not gonna be hungry tonight. So I've just got something to keep me going. Wow. I know I promised you Bulgarian food at the start of this video. McDonald's was a bit of a cop out, but it was getting urgent as well. I needed some food in my stomach and I needed to sit down and I needed to use the toilets there. Um, but I'm gonna make up for it. I picked up one of these maps from the front desk of the hotel and it always suggests restaurants. Restaurants such as a Russian restaurant, maybe, maybe not. The Fox and Hound, which is Irish. There is a Mehana Mamin Kolio which is a Bulgarian cuisine restaurant, but 3, 8, 3 p.m. on my own, I'm not gonna go there. A place called Niagara Pizza Restaurant and Barbecue, the Captain Cook Restaurant, which is beef and fish, and the Taj Mahal. Not much in way of uh, Bulgarian food, but we are gonna go for a walk because there's a place called Happy Bar and Grill, and they claim to be their biggest restaurant chain in Bulgaria. So I'm gonna go past one and check them out, see what they're like. This is the last of the attractions from my list from TripAdvisor and it's the Ivan Vazov National Theatre. Regrettably not today, I will not be going in to see any performances. Already I'm seeing a very strong cultural link with Russia. Uh, especially the colours of some of the buildings. Look at that, that is fantastic. That stunning building is actually a bank. Although I did notice on the front door they have a sign saying no guns. Ah, good thinking, yes. I just spotted something on that free tourist map and it's just down here and I'm thinking it might be worthwhile checking this out. It's not actually on my TripAdvisor list. Prince Alexander the First Battenberg Mausoleum. This isn't on the TripAdvisor list. It just caught my eye. What I came to see is actually just across the road there. I came here to see the Soviet Army Monument. As you can see, it's boarded off and covered in scaffolding. Maybe they're demolishing it because just across the road where that mausoleum is, there's a very, very strong anti-war, pro-Ukrainian set of photographs. You guys? Security police. <laughs> but just peeking through the hole here, it's been vandalized. Yeah, so maybe it's been fenced off for its own protection. Just checking my map because I was going to still check out that happy restaurant. Happy. Main courses seem to range from six, seven, eight pounds. A lot of what I'd say is Cuban, maybe uh, Mexican fusion foods, um, beef, chicken, these sort of things. A lot of seafood as well, but nothing remotely Bulgarian as far as I can see. One thing I've noticed about the city centre of Sofia, the road signs are in Latin and also Cyrillic alphabet, so you can't really get lost. Unless you're me.
that shot just then is typical of what I have to go through to bring you the highest quality of videos on this channel. You must be thinking, when did that start? Ha ha. Now that's typical. Loads of trams going past and I thought I'll get a shot of the Ministry of Justice with a tram passing in front of it. I waited a good 15 minutes for a tram to pass. Typical. But there were two police uh, cars full of police officers and they were keeping an eye on me thinking, what is he doing? Or the Bulgarian equivalent of that. It seems to be the same situation here as in the UK. You wait ages for a tram, then three pass at once, honestly. Behind me is a place called the Zvela Nedelia. And I know that because it's on my free map. I use a combination now of Google Maps printed off from my laptop and also Michelin Maps, which are downloadable. Uh, and neither of them mentioned what this is. So let's go and find out what it is. Where are all these trams coming from now? Look. Now that I've finished filming, it's like the Clapham Junction for trams. Well, I've done a big loop and I'm back at the uh, Roman ruins again with a saxophone player playing the same repertoire of songs as I heard four hours ago. Right, still a couple of things I'd like to see, even though it is now 10 to 5. We can do this. Well, I must say my quest for Bulgarian food has not been a great success so far. Not a lot of places selling street food, which surprises me. And most of the wee restaurants and cafes and things that I've found seem to be selling Western food or foreign food, nothing Bulgarian. Everyone seems to have a, a love affair with McDonald's over here. There's almost one on every block. But I haven't given up yet. Oh, better cover that up. Um, didn't realize I was, in, I was in this part of town. Oh, shocking. Um, yeah, so there's a supermarket down here I want to check out because it's a big one and it should have lots of Bulgarian food in it, hopefully. And then something else. I may have timed things rather well because that's the rain back on now. Oh, and it's getting cold. It is now five o'clock. Yeah. Supermarket, something special, and then back to the hotel, I think. I know Bila is an Austrian chain of supermarkets, but this is a big one. So hopefully we'll find some interesting Bulgarian food. Papaya, look at the size of this thing. I smelt it as soon as I came through the door. The bakery. olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, all types of olive oil. Right, it's all in Russian, no it's uh, Bulgarian. No shortage of chocolates here but like all places they have a full selection of lint. Brandoro, what's that? 
Looks like a smoked cheese. Here we go with all the uh, Bulgarian cheese. This is more like it. Oh shock, I've ended up in the beer section. If only they had that at my local shop. Look at the prices of some of these large beer bottles. That's a great beer selection, but I'm not having any today. Not a single can of tenants in sight, brilliant. Anyway, I'm gonna put this camera away before I get shot because I'm sure if security are watching me, they're getting a bit twitchy. There's a few things I have to buy for the room. I'll see you out on the street. Yeah, so there's doing crazy things for YouTube and doing crazy things for YouTube and getting arrested. And I didn't wanna push my luck in there because I don't know Bulgarian law very well. Maybe filming grapes is hostile reconnaissance, who knows? So I stopped when I could. Right, one more thing I'd like to see. My legs are killing me and my energy levels are very, very low. In fact, lower than this GoPro, which is at 9%. I was here yesterday and I came off the, the coach from London. After 50 hours on a coach, I think the legs have died and that's why they're sore today. I did actually go into the, the main railway station to have a snoop around, but the brain was saying, uh, just call time out, have a look tomorrow, just get to your hotel. So here I am, I'm gonna have a quick look around Sofia Central Railway Station. The Orient Express, it ain't, but it does have character. And it's all made up of all kind of random types of carriages. Some have got compartments, some are just normal seats. What an interesting train. The Considering passenger transport on trains started in Britain, it's a shame we don't have more railway heritage outside stations. Part of the excuse is we don't have the space, but also part of the excuse is Network Rail would rather use the space for a car park instead of displaying a proud railway heritage. Such a shame, really. Well, guys, if you're still watching at this point and you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so because next week I wouldn't want you to miss out on this video. Next week's journey is from Sofia back to Edinburgh, but of course I'm not doing it the easy way. I don't do that kind of stuff on this channel. No, no, I've got a layover in a very special place, about nine hours. It's a place I visited in 1986. That is, what, 38 years ago? I always meant to come back and never got around to it. I don't procrastinate, by the way, it's just that things get in the way. But 
I kept a travel diary. That was back in the days when you had backpacks and Lonely Planet guides. And I'm going to try and retrace my steps. So please watch next week's video. It's going to be a good one. In the meantime, thanks very much for coming to me up to Sofia. I must return, but I must return when the weather's a little kinder. I'll see you next time.